This is a story about a young girl who defied social norms and grew up to become a courageous freedom fighter. This is the story of Lakshmi Sagal, more commonly known as Captain Lakshmi. Lakshmi Sagal was born in Chennai on the 24th of October 1914. Her father was S Swaminathan, a London educated criminal lawyer, and her mother was Ammu Swaminathan, a social worker and freedom fighter. Her parents were progressive people who dismissed the caste system. They played an active role in the independence movement. As a young girl, Lakshmi witnessed her parents' fight for independence was fought alongside their battle for social reform. This was a major part of her upbringing and it would shape the person she would become as an adult. She inherited her parents' thirst for rebellion and righteousness. Lakshmi's mother was particularly influential during her upbringing. She would take Lakshmi to rallies and campaigns of several freedom fighters and social activists. On one instance, in 1922, during the boycott of foreign goods, her mother walked into a room, took her expensive foreign-made dresses and threw them into a large bonfire in an act of protest. Lakshmi's mother would go on to be one of the 15 women who helped draft the constitution after independence. By witnessing her mother's unbreakable spirit and determination, Lakshmi's ideology was molded by her experiences and by books like Edgar Snow's The Red Star Over China. Her small acts of rebelling against the norm began as a child when she defied her own grandmother's conservative views by walking up to a tribal girl, holding her hand and asking her to come play, much to her grandmother's dismay. Lakshmi understood from a young age that true freedom won't just come when the British leave. India needed to reform its social climate too. However, Lakshmi decided to complete her education first and then join the independence struggle. At a time when women's education wasn't considered essential as they were expected to grow up to be dutiful wives and homemakers, Lakshmi's parents instead highlighted the importance of an education. She received an MBBS degree and a diploma in gynecology and obstetrics in 1940. She then joined the government Kasturba Gandhi Hospital in Chennai. At the same time, the brutal Second World War was being fought between the Axis and the Allied powers in Europe. In a state of desperation, the British army needed more people on the front and were forcing Indian doctors into recruitment to treat wounded soldiers. Not wanting to aid Britain in the war effort, Lakshmi moved to Singapore which at the time was another british colony she opened her private medical clinic where her patients were mostly the poor indian migrants living in singapore the move to singapore was life changing in many ways for lakshmi while there she met several indian revolutionaries and played a more active role for independent india she joined the indian independence league formed by Rashbari Bose. In 1942, Singapore was surrendered by the English to Japan. Lakshmi began treating wounded soldiers and the prisoners of war captured by the Japanese. The summer of 1943 marked a turning point for Lakshmi. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose had arrived in Singapore from Japan. He wanted to convince the Indian diaspora living there to join his Indian National Army. Bose had managed to gain Japan's support and funding for his army. In return, he would help them defeat British forces, as the ongoing world war was a perfect opportunity to overthrow British colonial rule as well as defeat the allied powers. Bose had thought of doing something that was unheard of. recruit women into the army he knew 
There was no way we could achieve freedom with just half of the population. Women needed to join the fight. Word of this reached Lakshmi. Fate had placed her in the right place at the right time. She figured that it was time to be more involved in the fight for independence. She listened to Bose's radio broadcasts and attended his speeches where he would encourage young Indians to participate in the fight to remove British rule. Drawn to the Netaji's spirit, charisma and vigor, Lakshmi sought for a meeting with him. Over some tea, Bose expressed to Lakshmi his will to involve women in the freedom struggle by forming an all women infantry regiment in his Indian National Army called the Rani of Jhansi Regiment. After a 5 hour talk, Lakshmi immediately nominated herself to join. Bose, impressed by her courage and will, appointed Lakshmi as the commanding officer of the unit and from then on Dr Lakshmi became known as Captain Lakshmi commanding officer of the Rani of Jhansi regiment an identity she would proudly identify herself with for the rest of her life this feat made her the only woman minister in Bose's council of ministers of the provisional government of Azad Hind to recruit women into the regiment captain lakshmi began organizing rallies and gave speeches that brought out a rebellious spirit among the indian women in southeast asia she went door to door in singapore and malaysia to convince indian parents to allow their daughters to join the regiment by october 1943 over 1500 indian women from various social ethnic religious and language backgrounds had joined the regiment they trained alongside the men together they would march for 40 miles climb mountains learn military strategies and how to use firearms in the eyes of the indian national army the male and female soldiers were equal at first The male dominated Japanese army ridiculed the idea of an all female regiment. They considered them weak and delicate and questioned their need for land and a campsite. They thought the women would run away immediately after hearing a single gunshot. But Captain Lakshmi and the rest of the soldiers in the unit proved them wrong. Once the Japanese saw them in action, they were heavily impressed. In March 1944, after months of training, the first batch of the Rani of Jhansi regiment along with the rest of the Indian National Army and the Japanese army moved from Singapore to Burma and by May smaller batches moved from Burma to Imphal in Manipur where they took part in guerrilla attacks against the British. But the regiment was insufficient. They could not take their stand against the Britishers' heavily equipped forces for much longer. After several attempts and casualties, Subhash Chandra Bose reluctantly gave them the order to retreat. But the regiment was not willing to back down. Captain Lakshmi, along with every member in the Rani of Jhansi regiment, sent a letter to Bose. signed with their blood explaining how they were willing to die for their country on the battlefield then run away taken aback but proud of their passion bose allowed them to continue their fight but alas it all fell apart when in 1945 the indian national army and the japanese army were defeated by the british during the battle of imphal Captain Lakshmi was captured and sent to Burma where she was kept as a prisoner of war. After a year, she was sent back to India where she would stand trial along with the rest of the army in Delhi's Lal Qila for treason and rebelling against the British Empire. This is now known as the historic Red Fort Trials. The trials began on the 9th of November 1945. and they attracted massive public attention until now 
majority of Indians were not aware of the role and contributions the Indian National Army had made to the independence struggle. British censorship had barred newspapers from reporting any of their activities. But now, word was getting around. Within a few weeks, Indians began learning about the gallantry of Subhash Chandra Bose's Indian National Army that consisted of civilians and mostly lower-class citizens. This burst upon the entire country a flame of enthusiastic fervour never seen before in history. Massive demonstrations and rallies were held all over the country in solidarity of the Indian National Army. Many Indians who were a part of the British Army switched their allegiance and began revolting within their garrisons. Even those living in the most remote of areas joined the revolt. The trials were conducted at the height of the Quit India movement. In an unexpected occurrence, the Congress announced that they would defend the Indian National Army in court. Jawaharlal Nehru himself put on his lawyer's robes to defend them and Bhulabai Desai made an iconic speech in their defence. Despite this, the defendants of the army were found guilty and sentenced to deportation. But due to mass protests, the sentence was never carried out. Members of the army were released and celebrated as heroes. Many consider the trial to be the tipping point that ended British colonial rule in India. Captain Lakshmi, along with the rest of the army, had lit the final match that set off a wave of nationalism all over the country. Within two years of the trials, British rule in India came to an end, and our country was once again a free nation. After independence, Captain Lakshmi remained committed to social work and returned to her medical practice. She settled in Kanpur, where she treated refugees who arrived there during the partition of India. In the 1970s, she became a member of the Communist Party of India, Marxist, and represented them in the Rajya Sabha. She co-founded the All India Democratic Women's Association and organized many of their campaigns. In 1984, she tried restoring peace and helped Sikhs in Kanpur during the anti-Sikh riots and led a medical team to Bhopal after the gas tragedy. In 1998, she was awarded the Padma Vibhushan and contested in the 2002 presidential election but lost to APJ Abdul Kalam. Captain Lakshmi Sehgal passed away on the 23rd of July, 2012, at the age of 97. Stories of her fearlessness and her contributions towards the independent struggle and the Indian people often goes under the radar. The formation of the all-female Rani of Jhansi Brigade has inspired young women like me all across the country to break away from social norms and choose their own path in life. It has filled them with courage to stand up for themselves and demand the respect they rightfully deserve. She leaves behind a legacy of a brave freedom fighter, a champion for women's rights, and a symbol of resilience in the struggle for independence. With this, we reach the end of today's episode. We would love to know how the story of Lakshmi Segal has inspired you. Connect with us and share your thoughts on our social media handles at Epilogue Media on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. For more stories of immaculate women who shattered glass ceilings, subscribe now to the Women in History podcast.